Hello and welcome to Health Dialogue Show. I am Dr. Bhumika and I welcome you all to our special Mythbuster session for Lung Cancer Awareness Month. Observed every November, this month is dedicated to raising awareness about lung cancer, its prevention, early detection and treatment options. Lung cancer remains one of the leading causes of cancer-related deaths worldwide, but it is often misunderstood. Myths and misconceptions about lung cancer can create unnecessary fear, stigma and even barrier to prevent the lung cancer and treatment. So today we are here to separate fact from fiction. Our goal is to debunk common myths, provide accurate information and empower you with knowledge to protect yourself and your loved ones. So to do that, we have Dr. Piyush Bajpai with us today. Dr. Piyush Bajpai is an MBBS, MD General Medicine, Specialist Accreditation in Medical Oncology with European Society of Oncology Certification. He is a DM in Medical Oncology and is currently the Head and Consultant of the Department of Medical Oncology Sciences at Manipal Hospital, Delhi. He is a Cancer Specialist with nearly two decades of clinical experience. He is a Specialist in Gynecology, Breast Malignancies and Hemato-Oncology. He has a keen interest in molecular oncology, precision oncology, targeted therapies and immunotherapies. We welcome you to the show, sir. It's a, uh, it's a, like, we welcome you to the show, sir. It's a pleasure to have you here today with us. So I'll start. We have a few statements here. And if you can tell us if they are a fact or, or they are a myth. So the first statement here today is, air pollution cannot lead to lung cancer. Earlier, this was something which we weren't very sure. But now with passage of time and uh, the scientific community giving some answers on this particular question, air pollution is now definitely being linked to causing lung cancer. Uh, there has been a recent research uh, where nearly uh, more than a half a million patients, uh, people uh, took part and this was basically in United Kingdom, Taiwan and other North, uh, other uh, South Asian uh, countries where it was found that uh, a PM 2.5 level of uh, air basically can cause changes in the lung, the lung uh, mucosa where it was found that uh, these particles are causing certain mutations which are actually the precursor or the starting point of lung cancer. So now we have a very strong evidence prospectively uh, where we can say that uh, this sort of air pollution of PM 2.5 particulate matter uh, because these are very very small particles and they are not emitted by the you know uh, nostril hair and various uh, mucosa secretions uh, inside our thro throat they are not held by them and there, once they land actually in our lung, deep into the lung, they can cause DNA damage mutations and are being now linked to these mutations, which are the precursor for lung cancer. So now we have evidence also to say that. All right, sir. Okay. So the next statement I hear, uh, I have here is only smokers get lung cancer. So is it a fact or is it a myth? So this is definitely a myth that only smokers get lung cancer and we uh, are seeing that uh, you know uh, lung cancers there has been an increased prevalence uh, in our society uh, in the western world especially in ladies especially in young adults so the reason behind this being stated is that these individuals are also in the vicinity of somebody in the family who is smoking. In the house, a child is sitting next to the father who is smoking. Uh, likewise, a lady is sitting next to, uh, you know, any person in the uh, working place or uh, any place where smoke is there. So that all uh, we are seeing that, you know, there is an increasing trend of lung cancer, especially in non-smokers. and most of them are giving a history of passive smoking that is somewhere somebody in the house they are subconsciously breathing that air uh, breathing that polluted air of uh, the smoke which carries multiple carcino carcinogens so the cigarette smoke carries multiple car carcinogen and these individuals are taking their breaths normally 
so they take their breaths normally and these particles are landing again deep inside the lung and uh, these are not getting filtered by the upper respiratory tract and these are uh, now causing increased trend of cancer in ladies and you know uh, younger age group cancers all right sir so definitely this is a myth right it's important to know that even second hand smoking and third hand smoking can affect or can make you Plus more prone to lung cancer second hand yes right sir my next fact is, uh, statement is if you've smoked for years quitting won't reduce your lung cancer risk so what is your, your take on that statement quitting smoking at any point of time by a smoker can actually cause a lot of benefit once a uh, individual is determined to quit smoking from the very next day his heart rate would normalize would would come down and then within a few hours basically his uh, anxiety levels and uh, uh, you know anxiousness would relatively start coming down though there would be panic attacks for uh, you know uh, urge to smoke but determination is important what would happen is the carbon monoxide levels which are there inside the body would eventually get washed off with, by the next day within a few months basically uh, there is a lesser chance for such a individual to give develop any respiratory issues as in infections or copd attacks or asthmatic attacks or any other respiratory illness which he was having or she was having because of smoking within a few years uh, the cardiovascular morbidity that is a chance of a heart attack comes down and by the end of 10 years the lung cancer risk actually is halved that is almost 50% the chance that you know one individual would get the benefit of it by quitting smoking had he, uh, he or she not quit uh, had not quit smoking the lung cancer uh, risk would have been let's say x it would after quitting become x by 2 so it is a clear benefit and not only lung cancer but 12 other major cancers like breast bladder urinary bladder uh, like stomach or uh, esophagus so all these risks are cut down nearly to half so it takes years though but definitely the trend towards benefit starts immediately all right sir another uh, statement here is lung cancer is always fatal so is this true so every cancer for that matter one must understand that lung cancer or any other cancer if we are able to diagnose the cancers in the early stage we are able to first of all we must adapt habits to nip the growth of cancer in the bud once they are starting to grow so that is by positive lifestyle that is exercise nutritional uh, high nutritious food and avoiding carcinogens as smoking so abstinence of total smoking and alcohol so definitely this nips the uh, cancer in the bud now now the second point is catching cancer early so screening procedures like breast cancer or lung cancer by ct low dose ct scan which is now a, a thing for certain individuals if this is adopted and we catch cancer any cancer early the chances of cure rates are definitely very good and this is when i say very good i mean above 80% cure rates are there in certain cancers uh in most of the cancers i would say uh when we are able to catch them in stage 1 or stage 2 so uh, it all depends that what is the stage that we are dealing with this uh, the techniques the tools to analyze cancer to the level of the dna to analyze the mutation what is really going wrong so we can do that now and we can actually drug uh that is stop that mutation revert that mutation or probably uh, stop the cancer cell to grow which uh, where that particular mutation is there and this is resulted into uh, stage 4 lung cancer patients going up to almost more than 5 years in certain uh, lung cancer subsets so yes uh, early lung cancer definitely is curable if it is 
advanced or locally advanced the treatments are getting better so please definitely one should consider going for screening first of all abstinence if in case one has been a smoker or going for screening if one has been a smoker again heavy smoking has been there and if in case one has been unfortunately diagnosed with lung cancer then please definitely go for treatment there is something which uh, these days doctors can do uh, treating lung cancer yes that's that's good to know sir that the treatments are becoming better and people can be saved so my next statement is uh, young people don't get lung cancer as i mentioned earlier that lung people young people uh, are now being diagnosed with lung cancer for the reason that during their childhood they have had a exposure to passive or second hand smoke in the vicinity somebody in the home has been smoking uh, certain states uh, where the system especially like hilly regions like himachal where uh, the houses are small and uh, the concept of chula was there earlier now lpg cylinders are coming in but earlier where the chula system was there where you know there was smoke inside the house so there you know uh, a lot of children were being exposed to these small particulate mat- matter which they were inhaling uh, uh, they used to take breaths normally so these particles land up deep inside the lung and therefore these are causing mutations and now we do get to see at times uh, that young individuals even at the age of 30 years less than that coming to us with lung lesions which are you know a differential diagnosis where we make of lung cancer as well all right sir uh, so the next statement is all lung cancer patients have cough so what is your take on that statement most of the lung cancer patients do have cough especially uh, a chronic cough is what uh, is one one, one should escalate towards you know uh, sus- make a suspicion of uh, there could be a lung cancer underlying uh, the uh, reason behind this chronic cough so what is chronic cough chronic cough is something where uh, the cough is persisting for more than 3 weeks so something where a, a cough is persisting is associated with any bleed that's what we call as hemoptysis so one should definitely consult a doctor get the imaging of the chest done probably a ct scan uh, if there has been a strong smoking history but having said that cough is one important symptom in most of the individuals but nonetheless there are other symptoms like shortness of breath could be there that is uh, difficulty in breathing uh, there could be chest pain there could be chest pain uh, as one of the symptom there could be weight loss as one of the symptom there could be uh, any neck swelling as one of the symptom so a headache also could be the first presenting symptom in a smoker who has been you know uh, who who is having a asymptomatic lung mass but is having headache back pain again could be a symptom so these symptoms could be there and of course uh, bleeding uh, especially while coughing could be one of the another symptoms along with cough so cough alone is not the symptom but yes cough is one of the major symptoms that's what i can say and chronic right. cough should not be right sir right another statement is all lung cancers are the same so as i said that uh, we have now uh, dissected lung cancers into several disease entities and this is because of the presence of a certain platform like next generation sequencing uh, where we are able to analyze the disease pattern for, uh, at the level of dna Uh, where we are able to pinpoint mutations and uh, this stratification is so important for the reason that now we have drugs for these separate entities so if for one entity you have a separate drug and the, for another entity you have a separate pill so it is very important to know because you can treat these particular entities more effectively uh, sometimes you really do not require chemotherapy you can just treat with a oral pill so lung cancer is not one uh, disease now Uh, earlier it was in uh, probably in 2005 2006 but now in 2024 uh, we are seeing that lung cancer is uh, one broad disease but we have a lot of 
other classifiers which need to be worked for. So lung cancer, we cannot put a full stop over there. After being diagnosed with lung cancer, we have to work up further the patient to look for better treatment modalities. All right, sir. All right. So my last question to you is, is vaping safe and uh, it does not cause lung cancer? So is this true? So uh, earlier vaping was thought that uh, it is, it is uh, sort of going to expose the lung to a very low uh, pollutant uh, material but eventually it has been realized that vaping is also causing lung injury and there are reports that uh, severe scarring of the lung has happened and because of that any scar in the lung or any injury to the lung is a precursor of lung cancer. So vaping is definitely not safe and uh, it needs to be understood that uh, there is no shortcut one has to be totally you know determined to quit smoking and all forms of it so uh, definitely vaping is not the way or a shortcut so please do not cut edges and uh, definitely it is going to cause a scarring of the lung so abstinence from for, from smoking nicotine is uh, very important right Thank you so much, sir, for giving us your time. It was a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you, Dr. Bhumika, for having me. And uh, again, I would re-emphasize that abstinence from smoking is very important. Please take the help of uh, your your near loved, and, uh, loved ones and dear ones who can probably remind you. So on an individual level, one can actually, in India, quit smoking, bring down not just lung cancer risk, but other cancer risk as well. On a community level, we should focus on how we can actually reduce pollution if, uh, and, and contribute to the society. Thank you. Never miss a medical update from Medical Dialogues. Like, subscribe and press the bell icon.